Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game From the Shadows by Moonlit More Games. The game plays one to four players, is a competitive card game, deck builder slash tableau management game, and you can choose between multiple different heroes against multiple different monster Villain. villains. Yes, and in the game you're basically going to what? You are utilizing your attack and item cards to combo attacks against certain monsters and villains in order to defeat them, gain better loot to strengthen your deck, and finally defeat whatever a master villain is the, the ultimate villain. And player with the highest amount of victory points from killing monsters, getting opportunity cards, and cards in your deck will be the winner. And if you're about to die, you can obviously go ahead and eat some food and it'll keep you alive or utilize a health potion that you'll lose some victory points for at the end of the game, but it's going to give you even more HP. You can always resurrect yourself so you're never going to be out of the game. But let's go ahead and talk about how to set the game up, how to play, and of course, my review. In From the Shadows, you get a lot of cards that are divided into different card types and some tokens. So. To set up, we're setting up here a three-player game just to show you a little variety. Uh, you're going to each hero player will choose one of the hero decks and cards and place that main character card in front of them and have a token for 10 health. Uh, your helpful card there shows you everything that's in your deck and what you start with and the other side shows you how you're going to be scoring points at the end of the game. Then you're going to choose one of the main sort of villain types. We chose here the Master Vampire, which is claimed to be like kind of the easiest one, so a good one to start with. You'll place the actual main villain off to the side here, and then um, randomly from the villain uh, minion types of the vampire types, you'll choose two of those face down and place two treasure cards underneath each one. Then you'll put the remainder of those minions that you gathered. It depends on how many players you're playing as to how many cards you'll put into the basic monster deck. And for three players, you'll also have nine basic monsters that you'll add to that deck. You'll place four of those out to be active during uh, the round, along with a face-up treasure card, or sorry, treasure or item card underneath, shuffling in the rest of the treasure into the item decks right next, right next to it. And above that, you'll place the opportunity deck. These are cards that players will be getting as other players defeat the monsters in order to try to try to keep up and, and get ahead. And last thing you'll do is you'll make sure that all the monsters have HP. So you'll mm -hmm. give monsters AP from the AP pile. There's tens, fives, twos, and ones. And based on what the monster has on it, that's how much HP will the monster be getting. After that, you're gonna draw five cards and the yeah. uh, player's ready to begin the game. On your turn, you get one action. And you can play a card to attack. You can play a card to eat food and regenerate health, or you can resurrect if you are dead, or optionally discard to resurrect later at a different turn. So if you're attacking, you'll place your attack card in front of a target monster. You can also add items to your card. So you can combine up to two items, and on the item cards they'll say whether they can be combined with a uh, what benefit they get when they're combined together. Holy water might work yeah. with fire and mm -hmm. alchemy might work with an explosion type. Yep, and give you more attack or other benefits. In addition, those items will give you icons which are gonna help you in the fight against the monster. So the monster will, you'll first add up your, your base attack there with your items and your attack card. And then Play the monster is going to attack right afterwards. So if you do five damage to the monster, the monster is going to hit you. And that's irregardless of whether or not the monster is killed. Yeah. And then you Pay attention yep. to the uh, weaknesses for attacking and defense. So the attacking, attacking weakness, your attack will do more against that monster for each icon you have of that type. And the defense, you will be defended against the monster for each icon type of that you you have. Yeah, and then after you've attacked the monster, reduced its HP by whatever amount, 
it's attacked you back, then you'll have the opportunity to use your character ability, which will give you some type of benefit. Maybe it's plus one damage for each item that you have, or maybe it's whenever you draw from the deck, uh, which is gonna be something off of combat, you'll get to discard and draw new cards, or, or the assassin. Or take damage in order to deal more damage. Yep, and then after that, if the monster's been defeated, you will gain that monster as a trophy, you will gain the item card into your discard pile to be used later, kind of like a mini deck builder. And then you're going to replace out a new monster and a new item card in its place. And other players will get an opportunity card. Yeah, uh, opportunity cards typically are going to have two, maybe three effects on them. They'll let you do something unique and beneficial for yourself, something negative for your opponent, or they're going to give you an item symbol that you can utilize in combat that can either help you in defense or in attack. There's no limit to the number of opportunity cards you can have, and for the most part, you can play them at any time. Yeah, and if you choose not to use them, they're actually worth victory points at the end mm -hmm. of the game as well. Mm -hmm. When the monster card deck is empty, you're actually going to be removing the items, moving over the minions and the boss, and flipping over them, and then fighting them. And your objective is to defeat the main villain. And when you do that, the game ends. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. You get one action, so you choose to attack, you choose to heal yourself or resurrect, and then you pass. And it'll keep going like that until all the monsters are removed, mm -hmm. then the final boss is killed, and then the game ends and you tally up your points. And scoring is actually pretty easy. It's all listed on the card here. You'll get a point for each health of each monster that you killed yourself. And then you'll also get- Your hero HP. Yeah, the remainder of your HP. So having a lot of health at the end is good. <laughs> Sometimes there's cards in the item deck that you'll gain that will give you victory points like treasure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then so if your those. hero is dead at the end of the game, which mine was, you'll lose 10 <laughs> points. Opportunities can also give you victory points if you play them on your cards, depending on what they say. Or if you choose not to play opportunities, for every five you have, you're gonna get- 10 extra points. And whoever has the most points in the game from the shadows is the winner. So from the shadows is a deck builder of sorts. It's also kind of a management game, but you're not really managing your own tableau. You're managing the tableau that is in front of you, which all players can mess with. So you're trying to attack the monsters, have them hopefully counterattack you for very little, if anything at all, and then defeat them and gain their victory points, their item cards. You're gonna be trying to defeat monsters that give you high amounts of victory points mm -hmm. to get items that are gonna combine with each other, and you have an idea a little bit of what they do and how they combine with each other. They are covered, but you do know that like Holy typically works with fire, and Alchemy typically works with yeah. the explosives, and Corner typically gives you HP. Yes, that, and yeah. sometimes you're gonna get bonus icons. So with one icon of fire and a monster is a week to fire, you do one damage. But if you get two, it's gonna be two damage. And you can combine those items to do even more damage. And you can have up to two items in each of them. Uh, each of the different characters have a unique deck and a unique mm -hmm. play style. Some of them are more advanced than others. I played the soldier, Alicia played the conjurer, and Kelly played the assassin. And with the assassin, what'd you like about that one? Uh, I like the flexibility in order to, to sort of get a little bit extra damage by utilizing my health and turning it into damage and calculating that out. And because it's so important in this game to get that killing blow so you can actually get the points for the monster rather than if I did eight out of the 10 damage on the monster, then you'd swoop in and do two damage. It'd be kind of has that feel like cutthroat cavern. It is exactly like where, cutthroat cavern. Where you want to get that killing blow and you got to kind of calculate that. Doing out. a little bit of damage isn't going to get you anywhere. So you have to kind of decide do you want to push all the way to try and do as much damage possible in hopes that it'll come back on your turn? Do just a little bit. But either way, you're taking that damage. Sometimes mm -hmm. you might not want to even attack at all. And that can run into kind of almost like a little bit of a stalemate because you're like, okay, when is it they're going to attack? You're going to mm -hmm. try and build with the best possible hand you can have or just do little bits of damage so that you know on your next turn you can drop, uh, drop down your trump card along with your trump items and defeat the monsters. And it's all about that careful consideration. What's nice is your attack card will stay on the monster. That's to help calculate some of the some of the monster abilities. And also I think to help with the soldier deck to u better utilize the, the deck and get rid of some of those low, low point uh, attacks in order to get to those high point attacks. So like some of these p c c players that you're gonna be playing with or like the characters yeah. are gonna be more advanced than others, right? The soldier's actually got l very low right. attack cards, but has a lot of item cards and can gain bonuses for the item cards when you attach them to your attacks. And getting rid of those weaker attacks and leaving them on the board until the monster is defeated mm -hmm. is gonna be very beneficial for you because you'll have the higher attacks you can use to 
one shot those monsters. In addition, the conjurer can do sort of some spread out damage. I like the conjurer. Yeah. And that'll help kind of chip away at some of the health there and, and leave an opening for one of the other players to Yeah, to it's a really good combination there. for yeah. how the cards work. Being able to attack and do five damage to one and then splash and splash and mm -hmm. actually have the ability to use spells too. That's yeah, why you that's change your cool. bubbles and order them in which way you would like. Uh -huh. Play two attack cards, I think was one of them as well. Really, really, really cool cards there. And the Assassin was really works really well as well. The Soldier is very challenging. In fact, I would suggest if you're going to play the first game and you're playing two players, play any of them except for the Soldier. And then <laughs> move on with three players and use the Huntsman and then finally four players. Use the Soldier, but make sure it's on somebody who knows what they're doing. The games it's going to require a little bit more finesse yeah. in order to get that character down. I think the most interesting character was the Conjurer because there's just so much more options for what you can do. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> if I, 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 Conjurer and then the Assassin are very, very useful. I, I didn't really like the Soldier. He was too complicated for me. And being able to use the right combination of cards to kill those monsters was a little more yeah. challenging. You he had bad weaker luck attacks. with it, too. <laughs> yeah, I draw. also killed a lot of monsters you that killed, gave me yeah, like cards treasure that gave in me the treasure. And it's, you, it's, it's all about timing mm -hmm. and when you're going to choose to kill what. You want those points, but there's a cost to killing them depending on what is going to be underneath mm -hmm. them. Yeah. And that all plays a role in it. Uh, Treasure cards are great because they give you victory points at the end of the game, but if you get it early in the game, then you kind of have a dead card yeah, in they, your deck. Yeah, they literally don't do anything. anything. Yeah. yeah, they're just <laughs> worth five points. And there's not, they're not all treasures in here. There's smoke bombs and mold of cocktails. Basically, there's all the items you yeah. normally find in your deck, but they're better. They usually have double, uh, double types of symbols and whatnot. But yeah, you do want those points too. Treasure cards are good, but they're also dead cards. So you kind of have to weigh in and weigh out what's the best thing for you to kill. <laughs> also, when you kill all those monsters, you're gonna get these big baddies that come out. And these guys are gonna gain things like bonus attack what? for whenever you attack them, uh -huh. or they're going to give you like additional HP. They're gonna give themselves additional HP whenever they activate. Uh, the master vampire, when he activates, Whenever he takes damage, okay. he's actually going to steal four health from the weakest unit, and if that unit is killed by him, you get nothing. Yeah. So, so if you weaken them down too much. And also, if you only do three damage to him, then he's essentially gaining health. <laughs> yes, he's gaining health. He, uh, you are reducing all the rest of the monsters, yeah. but they don't necessarily yeah. attack you unless you attack them. So you're not super worried about it. I mean, these are like kind monsters. They uh -huh. they only attack you when you attack them. <laughs> so really, who's the bad guy in this game? <laughs> uh, there's werewolves, zombies, and mummies you can choose from. So there's four different villains in the game, which give lots of variety and replayability, and each of them play uniquely into how the game is played based on what you want to try and do. Like I mean, the mummy priest, check the top card of the loot drop pile. If it's a curse, apply it, apply it to the pharaoh mummy, otherwise trash it. And so there's curses in the game as well that you can give to other players that will mm -hmm. reduce the their victory points or maybe reduce the amount of attack damage they deal and it can move along to different players turn, based turn on what they have. Turn their food into poison and yeah. stuff like that. So the art in the game has a lot of qualities. I really, really liked all the monster art, all the different villain art. It has nice backgrounds. It looks really, really good. And I'm glad they chose to do it full art so you can mm -hmm. see all the art. Uh, the main characters are fine. I really wish they had more more background to them, I suppose. But the art for them is also nice as well. Um, yeah, there's, there's font choices that I probably wouldn't have made and some graphic design stuff that make it a little easier to see certain things. Yeah, Harder yeah. to see what's in the defense in some categories and whatnot. Yeah, I think the art is great, and then the design could use a little a little more polish, I think, to get it to something really, really u usable and, and nice to look at. Yeah, I also like the different choices in the health potions and holy waters. Uh -huh. These are all Those really look, nice. The items look it's good really too. easy to mm -hmm. see what they are, and you know what you're going to do with them. Pretty straightforward. If you like a mini deck builder with a little bit of like a cutthroat caverns kind of take on uh, reducing your enemy's HP, but not too much where your opponents can can kill it, but hopefully by the time you get, it gets around to you, you can kill it. Um, it's like the idea of uh, the monsters coming out until eventually the big baddie comes out with his yeah. elite minions, making the game a little bit more challenging and being able mm -hmm. to get those points where even if you're not winning at the beginning, you still have a chance at the end. And it's gonna be coming down to a very close game. So even though I played as the more complicated soldier character, I wasn't actually very far off between the conjurer and the assassin yeah. when playing and in mm -hmm. fact they were only two points away from each other so the game was actually very tight <laughs> really close. very close 
and that's really cool as well. The opportunities, there's a ton of them. A yeah. lot of options. They really change the game a lot. They do. They're how very you powerful. To use it to benefit yourself or to hurt other people or to to get that one more attack on the So where the one person might it. get that 11, 13 or 7 points for killing the monster, uh -huh. it might give me the ability to ignore a monster's ability or stop a hero from using their ability altogether. And then maybe Alicia will get to double their main attack card value. Or when a monster is attacked, to double that monster's attack value for the fight, meaning mm -hmm. it, if a monster were to hit Callie, she's got 4 health and the monster has 2 damage. Bam, now Alicia has killed Callie. And so there's a lot of ways to use these cards. Adding with curses and whatnot, this has a large variety and they're really cool actually. Some of them will give you straight up victory points or instantly heal you. And you can use these, I believe once per turn or as- You can, uh, there's no hand limit on them. You can use them as many per turn as you'd like. And there's, for most of them, there's no specific time you have to use them. Okay. And yeah, just a variety of monsters and how the deck works is really fun. Um, like I said, the only one drawback for me was that the soldier was very, very challenging and I wasn't like super used to the game. So I jumped into that and I probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> and the fact that you have to be prepared for the ability, the, the opportunity for your opponents to steal, sabotage you, sabotage you and take yeah. the kills away from yeah. you. Don't and, put yourself down to one health because someone could easily <laughs> finish you off. If you kill too many <laughs> monsters that have the treasure icon on them, you're going to gain those points, but eventually you're going to have a deck. stale deck yeah. and that can be a, an issue as well. So this game has a lot of thinking, a lot of choice that you need to make sure that when you're playing it out, you're setting yourself up for the best case scenario mm -hmm. at the end game because that's where the most points are going to be gotten and it's going to be the most difficult. So yeah, From the Shadows is a solid little deck builder. It's pretty straightforward. If it's something that you like, I suggest you take a look at it on Kickstarter. What do you think? Yeah check it out link will be down in the description below thank you guys for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review check out from the shadows link will be down below in the description and while you're down there hit that like button as well as that subscribe and bell notification to see more videos just like this one and join us live uh sundays and wednesdays on twitch 6 30 p.m pacific time we'd love to have you see us play games just like this one. We play video games on Wednesdays uh -huh. and board games on Sundays and usually the video game is board game related. <laughs> yep. And check out our website on filtergamer.com for blog, reviews, giveaways, all of that. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always we look forward to seeing see you guys, guys next time. time.